Okay guys, um, we're going to do multiplying and dividing rational expressions today. So a lot of times words like rational kind of um, are like confusing for kids because they don't know exactly what it means, but one little helpful hint is instead of calling it irrational, it kind of sounds like fractional, and that's exactly what a rational expression is, is it's a fraction. So this is right here is the formal definition that you take um, two polynomials, which is what we've been working with. This is a polynomial, this is a polynomial, and then you divide them and that gives you a rational function or a fractional function. So we're going to be working with multiplying and dividing. So when you do these, you always want to factor first because it just makes your life easier. But the way that you multiply fractions, no big problem, top times top over bottom times bottom. So the actual directions in formal words are right here, and it just says multiply the numerators to find the numerator of the product, and then multiply the denominators to find the denominator of the product. Then simplify the product by canceling common factors. So this part right here, we want to make sure that you're doing your con you're canceling common factors. So we'll talk about that more. Um, we also have to worry about the excluded values. So remember from yesterday's lesson to find the excluded values, you set the denominator equal to zero and solve it. Okay? So I actually usually, after I factor, like to do that part and just get it out of the way so it doesn't mix me up later on. So that's what I'm going to do with you guys. So it says find the product and identify any excluded values. So the first thing I'm going to do is see that this x is factored already. I can't do anything with it. So then I'm going to move to the next one, which is the next the denominator. So if I factor out a 4... I'm left with x minus 4. So this is the hockey stick method on this particular one. Um, then I'm going to move on to this numerator. And it has two terms, but they don't have anything in common. And they don't fit any of our patterns we've already learned, like difference of squares, because there's no perfect square, or difference of, or sum of cubes, since these aren't perfect cubes. So I know it's also factored. So I'm moving on to the denominator here, and this can't be factored either, so I get this, okay? So the next thing that um, you're going to do is you are going to multiply top times top over bottom times bottom. So when we multiply, we end up being able to make it one big fraction. So one thing I want you to know is that when we have pluses or minuses, that groups those two items and they become a happy little family inside those parentheses. So before you multiply, which I'm just going to write it like this, I'm not even going to distribute. Okay, I'm just going to write it like this. And the reason why is because we have to go ahead and cancel common factors. And when you start distributing, you're putting that in expanded notation instead of factored notation and creating more work for yourself. So who wants to do that? Not me. That's for sure. So then I get to here, and I can cancel out this common factor with this common factor. Again, factors happen when you multiply two things. So you get multiply two factors, and you get a product. So I can cancel this entire factor and this entire factor because I'm multiplying to the other things that are in the numerator with them or the denominator. I am canceling the entire family. That's the way it works with these things. You have to cancel out the entire family and send them on to vacation. Okay. So we did a little bit of this in the 9.1a notes and we're just taking it a step further and multiplying across the tops and the bottoms. And then you're going to be very careful and say, okay, what do I have left in my numerator? I have an x. And what do I have left in my denominator? I have a 4 and an x plus 3. So then you look at it and you're like, okay, can I cancel anything out? 
So sometimes students go, oh, I can take this x and cancel it out with this x. But remember, this x is in its happy little family. You can't cancel this x with this x because this is x is not being multiplied by 3. It's being added. So it doesn't work out that way. So guys, guess what? This is all we can do mathematically. Now, some students will ask me, can I multiply that 4? You can if you want, but again, you're just creating more work for yourself, so don't do it. Okay, now we need to go ahead and look at our excluded values. And whenever you do excluded values, go back to the beginning of your problem. So this is why I said I usually do them in the beginning, and then I didn't. I skipped right to here, but normally I do them. After I factored, I like to go to excluded values. So what are my excluded values? So to find those... I look at the denominators. Again, in math, it's okay to have a zero in the numerator, so I don't even need to worry about the numerator because it's okay. It's not okay to have a zero in the denominator, which is why we look at that. So I have a 4, an x minus 4, and an x plus 4. This solo 4 right here can't equal zero because it's 4. It's a constant. So the only ones I need to worry about are these two right here. So just like yesterday, I'm going to set them equal to 0, and I get x equals 4. And remember, it's excluded, so we exclude it. And then the other one is the x plus 3, and we exclude it. So my excluded values are x cannot equal negative 3 and 4. So when I wrote them like that, guys, the reason why I did it is it's from least to greatest. If you put 4, then negative 3. I'm not going to mark you down. You knew what you were doing. It's just most times in math, proper form is least to greatest. So if you guys can do that and it doesn't bother you, that would be great for me too. Okay, let's move on to the next one. So we're breaking it down piece by piece. So we start here, 4. I can't factor that because it's a term. I mean, I can. It's 2 times 2, but we're not going to do that just yet. So I'm just going to leave it. And then I'm going to come down here. And I see that there's two terms. So before I go to something like difference of squares, because I know you guys see that square there, I am going to say, do these things have anything in common? Our hockey stick, GCF, whatever you want to call it. So... I'm getting to the point now where I'm not showing the hockey stick because we've done it a couple times. And we're just going here. If you need the hockey stick, you can pause the video and come up and ask me. So 5x, I'm just going to do 5x squared divided by 5x. That would leave just an x here because the 5s would cancel. Minus 35x divided by 5x would just be 7. Okay, and then that's multiplied by x minus 7. And because there's a minus, I'm going to put it in its happy little family, even though they don't. It's okay. And then a 12x down here. So now I'm like, okay, what am I going to do? Um, I am going to see what I can cancel. So I told you guys, what you can do is write it all as one fraction. So we have 4 times x minus 7 all over 5x. But I'm going to pause for just a second because I want to show you guys some quick little trick real quick. Okay, So um, you can do this if you'd like. So instead of writing it as one big fraction, because we're multiplying here, I can actually cancel out with this denominator over here. So it's just skipping a step because if I were to take this, and put it over here, um, then I would put the denominator and those would cancel out anyway. So the reason why we can do this is because all of this is multiplying. Another thing that I can do is I can take this 4, and 4 is divided by 4 one time, so 4 goes into itself four, uh, one time, and how many times does 4 go into 12? Now, I can do this because one's in the numerator and one's in the denominator, so that's three. Another way to look at this um, is that 12 is four times three, so you're canceling out the common factor of four, and you're left over with that three, okay? 
So now let's see, what do I have left in the numerator? I have that placeholder of 1, so that goes there. And what do I have left in the denominator? I have 5 times the x. The x minus 7 canceled out, but I do have the 3, and I have this other x. So I get all that, which simplifies to 5 times 3 is 15, and then x times x is x squared. So that's the answer for that one. And now we just need to do the excluded values. Before I do that, I always like to show you guys two ways of doing things. So if you didn't want to cancel in the beginning of the problem because that might confuse you, you can also do it this way. So I was showing you before, 4 times x minus 7 all over you would multiply all these so you have to kind of look through my crossing out because i'm going back a step but 5 times 12 is 60 and x times x is x squared and then we have the x minus 7 so you can still combine it all in one fraction like we did up here then you can cancel that and that and then you go 4 goes into 4 one time and 4 goes into 60 15 times so it's usually easier for students with the smaller numbers but you can also use a calculator so if you can do 4 over 60 in your calculator then you hit the button the math button then enter enter and that will um, reduce your fraction for you and it'll show you it's 1 over 15 just make sure you get the x squared down in the denominator if you choose that method because that's where it belongs Okay, excluded values, we're going to come back up here. 5 is a constant. We have x, so x cannot equal 0. Because if it's 0, then everything multiplied by it. And then we have x minus 7. So if I do x minus 7 equals 0, and then I add 7, add 7, I get x equals 7. But it's excluded. So it cannot equal 0 or 7. Okay, moving on up, we're going to come up to this one right here. And now we have some of those factoring patterns that we've been working with for now uh, like four lessons. So I start here, x squared minus 16. That is got two terms. There's nothing in common, meaning there's no GCF. So I'm going to say, okay, does it fit the pattern for difference of squares? Is this a perfect square? Yes. Is 16 a perfect square? Yes. So that factors to, um, you write the first, the square root of x squared is x, the square root of 16 is 4, and then put a plus or minus in between. So that's that guy. Next, I'm going to kind of use different pens just because I think this might be helpful. I'm hoping it will be anyways. Um, I'm going to factor this right here. So how do we factor it if it has one, two, three terms? We t-chart. So I'll do my little t-chart here. I have x squared minus 2x, negative 24. Don't try and do these in your head. Like, I mean, like some people don't write these x squared, these numbers right here. It's so much harder that way. Just do this. Okay, 24. What makes 24? I got 1 and 24. That's not going to give me negative 2. I got 2 and 12. That's not going to give me negative 2 at all. I have uh, 3 and 8. Not going to give me that. Ooh, I got 4 and 6. Oh, I'm going to somehow get 2. I have more negatives, so the number 6 should be the negative ones because it's bigger, so it'll give me more negatives. And that checks out. So this piece right here that I'm circling, factors into uh, x minus 6 times x plus 4. Okay, moving on to the next one, which is x squared. And x squared cannot be factored, so I'm just going to put it like that. Sorry, this is going to drive me crazy if I don't change the color all the way. Okay. And then the last one we have is 2x squared minus 8x. 
which there's two terms there that I can GCF or hockey stick. So they both are divisible by 2x. So I'm going to pull that out. 2x squared divided by 2x will leave me with an x. And negative 8x divided by 2x will leave me with the 4. So if I were to multiply that back, I would get that right there. So now the task that I have is I have to cancel common factors. So you can write it all at one fraction bar if you want. Or at this point, you can start canceling. So we've got all multiplication. So x plus 4 and x plus 4. And then I have x minus 4 and x minus 4. Then here, where I have x squared, another way to write x squared is x times x. So guess what? I can actually cancel this x with this x down here. So I'm just left with an x instead of an x squared. Okay? So now that we have all the canceling done, we just need to go piece by piece. And I have you do this because students miss the numerator pieces when they don't kind of just scan their finger over it. In the numerator, I have an x. And then in the denominator, oh, see that? I have a 2. We put numbers in front, so it should look like this. Okay? So that's that one. Now we got to go up and do our excluded values. So what do we have to exclude? So just look at your denominator. So we have x minus 6. x minus 6 equals 0. Add 6, add 6. So x equals 6. Okay, there's an excluded value because it can't equal it. I'm not going to write them on the line just yet because I'm going to wait until I can um, put them in order from least to greatest because I'm a nerd like that. Then I have x plus 4. I know we canceled out x plus 4, but if at any point in the problem, even if you're going to cancel it out, it makes the denominator 0, you have to exclude it. 2 is not going to do anything because it's a constant. It can't magically become 0, but somebody could plug in x equals 0, so we're going to exclude it. And then the other one I have is an x minus 4. So this one has 4 exclusions. Okay, so order from least to greatest, I got negative 4, I got 0, I got 4, and I got 6. So those are all those excluded values. Woohoo, done with multiplying. Now we're going to divide rational expressions. And I know you guys love dividing long division last chapter, but I don't want to disappoint you that this one is much easier, and it's just one more additional step than what we were doing here. And that additional step is copy, dot, flip. So some of you are familiar with this, and some of you are not. So we'll go over what copy, dot, flip means. And maybe your teacher taught you a different way, and you remember how, and that's fine. But it's up to you. So what you always do is you copy the first fraction. Always the first fraction, it gets copied. That's why the first word is copy, and the first thing you do is copy the first fraction. The next thing you do is take this division and make it a dot. So that's where the dot part comes. And then the last thing you do is you flip that fraction. So if you look at the def definition up here, it'll say multiply by the reciprocal. That's the same thing as flipping the fraction. So that's your first step right there. Okay, next, what are we going to do? The same thing, because now look, it's multiplication, and it's just like all these other problems we, other did, we already did. So what we're going to do is we are going to factor these guys. So this one has two terms. It's a happy family. It can't be factored. Moving on to the denominator, it has two terms, but they're not perfect squares or perfect cubes, so they can't be factored. However, this one right here can. So I'm writing my next step down here. I'm just repeating what I wrote there. Here's my dot from the dot. So let me just say this. The first step is always copy dot flip, and then after that you're multiplying. So you're good to go. So now I'm going to hockey stick that one right there. And if you notice, 3x and 12 have a 3 in common. That's because this is 3 times x, and this is 3 times 4. 
So when I want to know what's left over, 3x divided by 3 is x, and negative 12 divided by 3 is negative 4. And then I cancel common factors. So I'm going to do those two right there. Then I'm going to do my finger scan. Here's a number. I have 3. Then I have the quantity x plus 2. If you accidentally do x plus 2 times 3, again, I'm not going to mark you wrong because technically in math it's not wrong. It's just proper form to put the 3 in front. And then scan the bottom. That one's been canceled. And then there's an x over here. Again, you are not going to cancel these out right here. So if you cancel out those x's right there, you're canceling out a common term with a common factor and that doesn't work that way so remember that's a happy family and in order to cancel it out you have to have the exact same thing in the denominator so you can send it on vacation okay let's do our excluded values i'm going to go back up here to look at my excluded values i'm not doing this one sometimes we do have to do that one um, but since this one's already in factored form right here i'm going to do this one so I have x minus 4, add 4, add 4, so x can't equal 4, and then I also have a denominator of 0, so x cannot equal 0, so 0 and 4. Alrighty guys, so we're moving right along, we've done 4 problems, we got 2 or 3 more to go, it's going to be fine. If you guys notice, all these problems that we pick are very similar to your homework problems so that we can prepare you for that and for your test. So um, make sure that you're actually studying these guys right here. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I am going to um, copy that flip. So one really um, neat thing that you can do if you want since you know you're going to have to factor is instead of doing that in two steps you can try and do it in one so if that's something you think you're capable of like you can factor that right now that's fine for the rest of us I'm just gonna go ahead and show the copy dot flip step and then factor just to make um, things super clear because I don't want to be unclear that's not cool Alright, so I'm going to go to 10x squared, and there's not really anything I can factor out of that, so I'm just going to copy it. So I've done my copy dot flip. This one, there's two terms. They have a GCF of 5x, and I'm left with x minus 8, because 5x squared divided by 5x would leave me with x, and negative 40x divided by 5x would leave me with 8. Then we come up here and factor out that GCF, which is an X. And then this one, you're going to be really careful because right here, 7, 28, and 35 all have a GCF. So your first instinct might have been to T-chart, which like makes me really happy because I'm like, oh, they see three terms, they're going to T-chart. So great, great idea. It's going to make your life easier, though, and your T-chart a lot easier if you actually factor out that 7 first. So doesn't that look like it would be a lot easier to t-chart than the step up above? Yes, you're right, Look, and that looks much better. Awesome. All right, so numbers that make 5 are 1 and 5, and then one of these has to be negative since this is a negative and this is a negative. So since I have a negative 4 down here, I'm going to make that a negative 5. So there's my t-chart for this guy. So now I'm going to write that in real quick. Long day, long day. You guys know how it goes. Okay, x minus 5 times x plus 1. So that's what we get. So let's start canceling. So... Families are always easiest to cancel first, so we're going to send x minus 8 on vacation. And then, you are more than welcome to cancel this x with this x, or if you prefer, this is really x squared times x, which is x cubed. So you can either pull the x from here, or you can pull the x from here. It doesn't matter which one. 
um, x squared divided by x, that x will cancel and that x will reduce. Okay, so if that's the way you choose to go about it, this x will go bye-bye because really what you're doing is x squared over x and one of these would cancel out and you'd just be left with that x in the numerator. And then 5 goes into 5 one time and 5 goes into 10 two times. So we always do this scan to make sure we're not missing anything. So we have a 2 and then there's an x. You see I almost missed it. And then there's another x. So there's an x squared in the numerator and then a 1 which you don't have to write in math, and then a 7, and an x minus 5, and an x plus 1. So now we have to go ahead and list our excluded values. So when we do our excluded values, it says if at any point it makes the denominator 0, it has to be excluded. So let's go ahead and look at these. I like starting in the factored form. So x can't equal 0. And then what about this one? What value will I plug in for x that'll make that 0? So what minus 8 equals 0? Oh, any number minus itself equals 0. So that's going to be 8, 8 minus 8. And then over here, 7 is a constant, so it's not going to make a difference. But I already factored this into what? Oh, 5 and 1. Okay? So those are all the excluded values. Let's pause. This is actually negative 1 because x plus 1 equals 0. So you guys notice I didn't do that for every one of those steps. I did it as a mental step. So if you need to write it out for every one, there's plenty of room over here. All right, let's do this next one. All right, um, x plus 11 over 6x times x squared plus 3x minus 4 all over 3x plus 12 and x plus 11 over 6x. I can't factor that. I can't factor that. So now I'm coming over here to t-chart this. So I have x squared 3x minus 4xx. Ooh, what am I going to do? Uh, 1 and 4 or 2 and 2? What could I possibly, one of them has to be negative, but I have more positive, so it's not going to be that guy, because those would cancel each other out if one was negative and one was positive. So I have x plus 4 and x minus 1, and then this is a hockey stick one, so 3 times x plus 4. And then what am I going to do? <laughs> oh, I can cancel out that common family. I'm going to make this a family so I don't accidentally cancel out something I don't mean to. So let's see, I think that's all I can do. So I have x plus 11 times x minus 1 all over 6 times 3 is 18. And then we have the x. So scanning, scanning, good. All right, excluded values. The excluded values are going to be x cannot equal 0. And then we also have a negative 4, but guess what, guys? This is really weird, but x cannot also equal 1. And the reason why it cannot equal 1 is because way up here, so do you see where we t-charted this guy right here? Where did this originally first show up? Right there in the denominator, right? So you're like, Wilkin, why didn't we do that on this problem? Why didn't we have to worry about that? Look at this guy right here. This was originally in the denominator, right? Here it is factored after we did copy dot flip. What are the excluded values? 0 and 8. Look at, we already excluded them, okay? So we didn't have to repeat something we already excluded. So in this case, though, we never excluded the 1. You might say, okay, why not, why not the 11? Why don't we have to exclude negative 11? Look at this problem. Was x plus 11 ever in a denominator? Nope. So guess what? That's okay to have 0 in the numerator, so we don't even have to worry about it. It's only the ones that are in the denominator, and it's at, at any point along the way.
Okay, almost done. We got our last problem. Um, we're going to copy that flip on this guy again. Now, something funny about mathematicians is they don't like having negatives in front of the x squared. I don't know if you've noticed this or not. Um, so what they'll do and what we have to do is we have to factor out the negative. So they all, what happens when you factor out a negative is everything changes signs and you can kind of imagine just factoring out a negative one. Okay. We still are going to have to teach art that but we'll get to that in a second. Moving on to this one, I'm going to factor out a 3x. Then I'm going to come over here, factor out a 5, and then I'm right there. Now I'm going to t-chart this. So by the way, hopefully this is on your radar right here. That, that x minus 2 was originally in the denominator, so when I do my excluded values, I'm going to have to exclude it. What about this one? Was this originally in the denominator? Nope, it's always been in the numerator. So don't have to worry about that one as much. By the way, if you do factor out the negative one, and after you've changed all the signs, so that when you, if you ever wanted to distribute, you get the exact same thing, um, Nope, that would be not negative 4. We can't have a scribble on there, guys. Anywho, what I was saying is it makes it easier to t-chart if you factor out the negative 1. Just FYI. Alright, so here's the negative 1. You can leave it as negative 1 if that just is better for your brain. Um, a lot of times I say that to you guys and you just want the shortcut. But in all honesty... Like, if you're going to remember it better by putting that one there, does it really take that much more time to do? And if it's better for your brain, do it. What's better for your brain isn't better for everybody's brain. So you might not all be doing the same thing, but it's got to, you got to take care of yourself, okay? So x minus 1, x minus 1, x plus 5, x plus 5, and then I'm going to do the scan. So... Be very careful because you have the negative there. That's why I call it the scan. The numerator scan. Boop, boop, boop. And the denominator scan. Boop. Those canceled, those canceled. Here we go. So that is our final answer right there. Now we just got to do the excluded values. So go to the factored part. I'm going to start here. So I have three not going to make a difference. I have x equals 0, so it can't equal 0. x minus 1, so it's going to be 1. Then I have negative 5 from that guy, and then positive 2 from that guy. And that's it. Alrighty. Take care.